So God of War Ragnarok is now verified on Steam Deck. So it released a bit ago, but it's 175 gigs installed, 100 gigabyte download. So does it work on a micro SD card? How's the experience? What are the best settings? And a stress test. So let's get into all that. All right, so in the options menu, we're using, well, basically FSR 3.1 quality. Instead of 800p, we got 528p, which in the smaller screen looks pretty good. Settings, textures on low, because otherwise we go over the VRAM limit in some levels. And that means performance degradation, pretty hard one. Models, low, anisotropic filtering, medium. You can also do high if you want to. Lighting on low, shadows, low, again for less VRAM usage as well. Reflections on low, we still have screen space. Atmospherics on low, like in the original God of War. Ambient occlusion, we still have it even on low settings. Tessellation on medium, too. And that's basically it. I don't like motion blur and film grain, personally. Just personal preference. Camera sway either. So that's why I turned those off. So let's get into it. As a starting example, I'm showing you Midgard. And why am I doing that? Well, this is the beginning of the game. And when I showed you the Steam Deck live the other day, when the game just released. Well, this is the first section you're into. And it was running even better than the original, so we didn't understand anything. I was, I was like, okay, apparently you can do 40s, 45 consistently on the Steam Deck. So that's nice. But at the same time, I was like, okay, what about other levels? This is a little bit too good to be true, let's be honest here. So I played more of the game in order to show you the actual worst case scenario. If you have a Steam Deck LCD, it's a little bit worse, but maybe one or two frames in the worst case scenario. So as you can see, Midgard is completely fine. There's nothing really to worry about. Here you can do basically consistent 45 or 50s, depending on what's going on. This is another section of Midgard, and as you can see, it runs worse on the Thor fight, especially looking a bit into the distance, but we're still, again, above 40 fine. So you might say, why use low settings? This makes no sense. Also, the upscaling, you might be able to do native. And while on Midgard, that's true. In other sections, in other levels, that's really not a thing, unfortunately. Um, I regret to inform you that that's not going to happen. Also, by the way, one thing that I noticed on the micro SD card, there are some stutters when traversing into levels like this because the game is loading something in the background. So, yeah, it maxes out the CPU for a second, and on the micro SD card, it's a little bit more noticeable. But really, while playing the game, it feels almost the same. I will get longer loading times which are not loading times like five minutes long it's a few extra seconds it really loads yes. very quickly so even on an sd card and considering it's a huge game maybe you have a 64 gigabyte steam deck with a micro sd card should be completely fine the one that i'm using is in the description by the way you want to get one so we take down this tree also, when it comes to upscalers, I think FSR 3.1 looks a little bit over sharpened, but it's good enough. XCSS, in my opinion, on this one looks a little bit aggressive when it comes to, well, very contrasting colors. Like when you're looking at the sky, you can see some extra ghosting. Or you also have the TAA solution that the game provides, that I think is the one used on PS5, which I think it looks okay. All right, so we're now in chapter 2 to send in some way and this is a way bigger map and while it says 40s and you might say oh okay 40s if you look into the distance which some parts of this chapter has you get a huge impact to performance gpu usage gets maxed out and this is why the low ish setting with sacrifice resolution Again, looking into certain directions will drop you into the upper 20s. You can remedy this also by using balanced FSR. Personally, again, I think it doesn't make it unplayable. It's a very small section of this level. Maybe close to the end, there's probably going to be more battles when you actually notice this more, more easily. But as you can see, in this map that is much bigger than Midgard, 
if we're looking into that direction, we see all this being rendered into the distance. I think that's why the that's big performance hit. Because if we look away into somewhere well, that the map is not accessible, you can see the performance difference. So what would I do in this case? Personally, a 30 FPS lock. If you are on an LCD Steam Deck, in this case we are in an OLED. Well, in the OLED you can do quality if you don't mind some drops in this section. But if you want to stay closer to 30, balanced FSR I think makes a little bit more sense. Just make sure to restart the game when you do these changes, otherwise you'll feel the VRAM. But quality, I think, on the OLED is completely fine. And then when it comes to the LCD, balance or performance, to get this frame rate and open this menu, unlock it to 30 FPS. That's my advice in order to have the most consistent experience. So let's now take a look at how it looks on the small screen and how much battery life we can expect. Welcome back, now in handheld, again quality FSR 3.1, I don't mind some very minor drops in very specific situations looking to the distance into 28-29. One thing I forgot to mention, HDR, enable it, in my opinion 60 HDR brightness is fine for the Steam Deck OLED, I think it looks pretty good like this and you get more control over the brightness. I think going too bright is a little bit too much, so this is only for recording purposes to show you how it looks like. It might be hard to notice when looking at this recording, but again, in real life it looks pretty good. When you look at the sky, it's super bright, which is kind of crazy to look at it, so I highly recommend you do it if you have an OLED. So again, we're here looking into the distance, worst case scenario, let's lock it to 30 FPS. Because again, in this case, I think it's better to do it that way. 40 is fine, but on Midgard, here we're not even close. Even at the lowest settings with super aggressive upscaling. And what to say, I think despite being close to the lower settings, it looks amazing. We still have great shadows, we still have screen space reflections. I mean, it's completely fine, in my opinion. I think you're not missing anything in particular. So yeah, when it comes to battery life, two and a half hours on the OLED. On the LCD, I'm guessing more like 90 minutes. So I think that's pretty good, all things considered. But again, this is with the 30 FPS log. If you want to play the intro at 60 or 40 or something, that's an option. But being realistic again, that's a small map, is the prologue of the game. It's not really demanding, unfortunately, that's what I've been getting to when playing the game. First impressions were amazing, and they're still good, in my opinion. Visually, still stunning. Um, performance, again, this I think is a 30 FPS game, now it's verified on Steam Deck. And you can see it just in levels like this. I think the standard settings is basically low settings with some upscaling. Well, in specific levels like this you can get something more into the upper 20s with the default settings. This a little bit higher than that. But I'll lock it to 30 for battery life and for consistency's purpose. I still think it looks great. I mean, I don't know how this is low settings. And we're running it on a micro SD card, so if you don't have a lot of storage, because, well, you have a, I don't know, a Steam Deck with a few games, plus the, um, I don't know, not enough storage, maybe you have a 64 gig Steam Deck. Again, this game is 175 gigs installed. Which I think is insane, but hey, it's a 100 gigabyte download. If you have a micro SD card, it's fine. A little bit longer loading times. Some of the traversal stutters, very, very small ones, are a bit more noticeable. But I think there's no reason not to play it on Steam Deck. I think it's fantastic. So yeah, just, in my opinion, lock it to 30, because in levels like this, it's going to suffer quite a bit. 
Especially looking into the distance, uh, there will be more effects on screen in bigger battles. It's a very long game. And we still have screen space reflections on low. I think that's great, honestly. Get under the bridge. <laughs> that's so badass. And by logging into 30, apart from the extra battery life, 2.5 to 3 hours on the OLED, 90 to 100 minutes on the LCD, you should be good. So now that we're a bit more ahead in the level, let me very quickly unlock the frame rate again. And as you can see, we're closer to the low 30s instead of the upper 20s. But it's still nowhere close 40s, even with an aggressive upscaling solution. Maybe, I don't know, Ultra Performance, FSR. That's still not enough. You're still below 40 in a level like this. Did another save when you get to the edge of the map. After going through the part that I just showed you. And as you can see here, we get more CPU usage as well. There's more buildings and stuff. But this is what we were looking at when we got like upper 20s at the beginning of this map. Okay. So, we were like at the other corner of the map. <laughs> so again, well, you can get 40s in some sections, especially at the very beginning. It's not a demanding map at all, Midgard. In this, I think our... Yeah, smaller cities with bigger maps. I think it's just worth logging into 30 and be done with it. You can do 40s, it'll drop into the 30s in specific sections, such as this one. But it's still part of the game and bigger maps are a bigger part of the game than Midgard. Especially in this game. No spoilers, of course. So again, settings that I recommended. Lock it to 30, you get 2.5 to 3 hours of battery on the OLED, on the LCD 90 to 100 minutes, but use balanced FSR on the LCD. And running of the SD card leaves only longer loading times. When it comes to performance, it's super stable with the Amacro SD card. The spikes on the frame time that you get at times due to CPU are a little bit more noticeable. But again, considering we're running on a micro SD card, I think it's completely fine. Again, most people maybe don't want to delete the entire, the, have their library installed on deck just to play one game, in my opinion. Or maybe you have a 64 gigabyte Steam Deck or 256. If you have the 256 gig Steam Deck, you're probably going to have almost all the storage filled out with a 175 gigabyte game. I think you're better off running it on the micro SD card in this case. Just make sure also to enable HDR. I think on this one it looks pretty good. Just put the brightness at 60 on the options menu. And you should be good. And you can increase the brightness to your heart's content, really. When it comes to system settings. I mean, just by looking at the sky, it's super bright. And if I increase the brightness to the maximum, the camera cannot handle it. Let me lower the... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's super bright still. So yeah. Yeah, it's super bright. Well, <laughs> holy hell. So that's my thoughts on God of War Ragnarok on Steam Deck. Should it be verified? I think I, see, I think so. So those, those are my thoughts at God of War Ragnarok on the Steam Deck, it's verified, looks pretty good. I think 30 FPS on a, on a PS4 game that looks this good, it's completely fine. The Again, the stressful areas are the issue, Midgard, which is a prologue, it's completely fine. You can do 40s, 50s, whatever. But then when you get to the actual game, and by the actual game I mean bigger locations, you'll drop into the 30s, so just log into 30, enjoy your time. Trust me, you'll get used to it if you don't mind. 40s is nice, don't get me wrong, but here that's not a possibility, at least not consistently.
So now if you look at it on my SD card, it's a 512 gig micro SD. Here it's got a War Ragnarok. It has a 1.5 gigabyte shader cache pre-compiled from Valve. It's 177 gigabytes installed. So again, I, I highly suggest you just install it on the micro SD card. And I'm showing you the Thor fight again because this part, while well, it can get to 50s, 40s, all that, is a very small map in comparison to what I showed you a moment ago. And uh, thanks to that, the prologue, if you lock the game to 30, just to get used to the controls at that frame rate, I th you get even more battery life on Midgard. So for consistency's sake, put it at 30. You might say, oh, but what about 45? Or, sorry, 35. Yeah, you can get 35, but once you get to the bigger map, even if you highly sacrifice the resolution, you're still going to be down there. But still, I was expecting way worse when it comes to this game. Again, remember, this was also on PlayStation 4, so technically it's a PS4 game. Technically. It's also on PS5, but on PS5 it's a... 60 FPS game or a 30 FPS game you should target 4K so yeah I think this is pretty impressive all things considered seeing all the bad PC ports we got lately this is a breath of fresh air so you can experience this game on the go which is awesome I still need to finish God of War 2018 I never got around to I never got around to finishing it which I'm working on right now. I'm now playing God of War 2018 because I'm super pumped to keep playing this one, actually. I really like the combat. Way more complete combat uh, in 2018, but makes sense. Technically, Kratos has less skills on the original. And I think I'm dead. No, I'm not. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did taking a look at it again, but on a more demanding stage. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you like what I do, subscribe, like the video, like it if you like it, like it if you dislike it, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys, thanks for watching.